Good morning, good family of God. How has your day been? I trust your day has been blessed so far. I'd like to use this opportunity to thank the G24 for motivating us, for allowing God to use them to motivate us in the reading of the book. The book we are reading this month is People's Keys for Christians. And it's about how to change behaviors that sabotage believers' lives. The author of this book is Tony Monsoon. And I have been given these topics to discuss about chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, 15, and 16. The topic for chapter 9 is how to learn to love people. Here in chapter 9, the author mentioned that if we have to be successful with people in life, we will have to learn to love them. We don't love them we don't love everything they do, all the things they do, but we love them for who they are. We love them because God created them. And God created them for a purpose, for a unique purpose. We are not talking about any kind of love here. We are talking about the love of God, which we choose to generously care about the well-being of others and unselfishly put their needs above our own, even when they do not deserve it. God is love and he dwells inside of us. A house he has made with his own hands, which he says he delights to dwell in. So God is so God is all about loving people. Luke chapter 12, verse 7. Let us influence and sow into people's lives because Jesus died for them. We should also be the power, we should also by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, inculcate or inculcate that lifestyle, that principle in the lives of our children. In, in John 13, verse 34 to 35, Jesus commanded us, to love one another. And in Matthew 22, verse 22 to, to verse 35, it says we should love our neighbors as ourselves. This is the second greatest commandment, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And by so doing, people will know that we are his disciples. Definition of love, God's definition of love. We, we have to understand God's definition of love and operate in it. God's kind of love is not based on, on, on a feeling and is not based on what others do for us either. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7, we are giving God's definition of love here. Love is, it states that love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never hurting or selfish or rude.
So this is what love is all about. And we go to chapter 10. In chapter 10, chapter 10 is a golden rule. And it, it shows us that we could apply golden rule. That is where in saying that we should do to others, the, the author made, showed us a golden rule here that we should do unto others the way we, we want them to do unto us. This is a golden rule that we have known from childhood, but even to adult age, but uh, we never seem to put it into practice in our lives, in our daily living. He encourages us not to tell others that we know this concept, but to live to it, to live up to it. We are to we are not to we are not to tell others about it, but we have, have to practicalize it. Let it be our uh, uh, our lifestyle. We should not be quick to point finger at others as the source of our problems. We have to identify a problem, come up with a plan to fix it, and then implement the plan. Here, we treat people, how we treat people, we change our lives. Chapter 11 states, the power of words. Here, the author encourages us to strictly control the words that come, come out of our mouth. If we have to be successful in life with people, we have to control our tongue. We have to control the words that come out of our mouth. Controlling the words that come out of our mouth will help us avoid problems in life. Because the, problem, the words that have come out of our mouth in many occasions have put us into, into trouble. If we are able to control it, we will avoid problems in life. The two ways to get things done in life, by what we say and what we do. Death and life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. The word of God said, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. That is in Proverbs 20, 18, verse 21. This is saying that our mouth have the power to bring us down and it has the power to make us. What comes off out of our mouth, if bad, if we, if bad things comes out of our mouth, <clears throat> we definitely read bad things. But if good things proceed out of our mouth, good things will come our way. We will reap good things. Our mouths are weapons. So let us use it against the devil. That is what it's meant to, to do. Let us be careful of the words we speak so that it does not so that it, it, it doesn't work against us. Words are seed. Once a word has proceeded out of our mouth, if we sow good seed, we will reap good crop. If we sow bad seed, we will reap bad seed. Let us learn to control our mouth because it is the life. It is like a steering wheel that controls a car. And it, it, is, it is a steering wheel that controls our lives. So let us be careful of the words we speak. We have, we go to chapter 12. Chapter 12 is speaking about bank, 
that we have bank account with every person we meet. He's speaking about making a positive impact in the lives of people we meet. And that impact we make on people, we always speak for a long time. It will make a lasting, a lasting impact in their lives. You will always be remembered by this, by the impact you make, you make in people's life. People themselves will testify of the impact that you have made in their lives. In going, in going by that, we could go to funeral and then people will come out and begin to speak of what, how their, your life has impacted them for good. That is what we are talking here. How we, we have to bank with people, how we have to leave a mark on people's life that we speak for itself. Chapter 13. Here, the author made it clear that people do not like, like to be criticized and people do not like to be gossiped about and people do not like to be complained about. Creation, criticism means to condemn and attack, lambast, rail against, post con on disparages, denigrate, give bad praise to, and run down. These all sound really, really bad. And we can all agree that we should not operate in this way as children of God, as men and women of God. Gossip means casual or unconstrained conversation and reports about other people, typically involving details that are not confirmed to, to be true. It's obvious from the definition that the sort of that that this sort of activity is bad and should be avoided if we want to foster a healthy people environment of at our workplace and church. The last is do not complain. Complain express dissatisfaction or annoyance about a state of affairs or an event Complain is grumbling and whining. We see why, why it's an undesirable way to conduct ourselves as Christians. We go to chapter 14. Here, chapter 14 here speaks how to correct people. The author encourages us to correct people in love. It does not matter if the person is wrong. If you need to correct a person, the best way to do it is in private. No one likes to, to have the, his, his or her faults or shortcomings paraded out in public of everyone to see. Making correction is in private. Making correction, corrections in private allows people to save face among their fellow co-workers and will. Among their fellow co-workers. <clears throat> we should not focus our correction on the person, but on the behavior that is not meeting the standard. Our correction is focused 
on the if our correction is focused on the person. No, our correction, if focused on the person, will be a direct blow upon the person. It is an attack upon the person. And people do not find it, find, people do find fault with that. People are not happy when we approach their issue like that or when we try to correct them in that manner. 15. Power of a question. People don't like being told what to do. So instead of direct orders to people, ask them questions. Asking questions include the solution, include them in, in the solution to the problem. When you include them, people in the solution, it makes them own a piece of it, which is all the difference, which will make all the difference in the world. Chapter 16 talks about appreciating people and making them feel important. Appreciating people makes people feel honored and important. So let us learn to appreciate people. Even when they have done a bad job, still appreciate them and tell them that they, there is a room for improvement. Appreciating people motivate them to be achievers in life. We should, uh, we should make appreciation our lifestyle. It should, it should be made a habit in our lives. To, in our lives to appreciate people. We should, we should give tangible gifts to people to show our appreciation for a good, a job well done. Thank you very much for listening and I, I trust that and I hope that you are blessed. May God bless his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen.